Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com, where we are all about developing for the NVIDIA Jetson Developer Kits. Today, I want to show you three tips to help you have a better desktop experience. On the Ubuntu desktop, the left side of the screen is a little bar here. It's called the launcher. If we click on the dash, we can see some files and applications. You can think of this as similar to the Windows Start menu. There are different lenses we can look through. Here are some of the installed applications. There's a search bar up top. We can look at files, movies, music, and photos. There's not a whole lot on this machine, it's new. Tip number one, arrange your launcher. So we can search for applications and files. If we want to find a file, we just type in its name or something close to it. So we can ask for system. We can see these files come up. Let's take a look at the system monitor. This is a familiar resources graph. Now, once I've opened up the system monitor, you can see that it appeared in the launch bar. If I right click on it, I can lock it to the launcher or I can arrange it. So if I take it here and drag it up, it becomes locked to the launch bar at this position. So now when I close the system monitor, you'll notice that it's still here. And now we can open up system monitor from the launcher. Another application I like to have in the launcher is a terminal. There are a couple of ways to open up a terminal. You can hit control alternate T. That's one way. Another way is to open up the dash. There are keyboard shortcuts on the desktop to do that. In order to open up the keyboard shortcuts, you hold down what Ubuntu calls the super key. If you have a Windows keyboard, that is the Windows key. And if you're using a Mac keyboard, that is the command key. So hold that down. You will see the keyboard shortcuts come up. So let's open up the dash with an application lens. So we see that we hit the super key and A at the same time. And then we can search for application. We want terminal. Open that up. It shows up in the launch bar and we drag it up here. Another application that I like to keep in the launch bar is the web browser. I find that it's more accessible that way. So let's open up Chromium. I'll drag that underneath the terminal. Tip number two. Turns out there's another way to open up a terminal. If I right click on the desktop, I can open a terminal here. But here's the tip. Let's open up a file browser window. Let's open up the SD card. It turns out in the file browser window, if I right click, I can open up this location in a terminal. So this happens a lot. You're in a window in the GUI, you want to go there, but you don't know exactly where it is located. This is an easy way to shortcut to it. A couple of other points of interest. I can go LS to list the files. You can see that they are the same as what's in this boot directory here in the GUI. Gooby, gooey, gooey. This gets lost on people a little bit sometimes. These are just different views of the same thing. So here's the interesting thing that you can do. You can type in CD and then drag a folder over here. Then switch back over to the terminal, hit return, and you are in that folder. So that helps a lot with navigation. Let's close this one up. Here's another trick. This is different than Windows and Macintosh. I can go up here into this bar and then start typing. So in Linux, the root is slash. Just go there. And then I can start my navigation. And it's pretty typical. You may want to go somewhere else by just typing it in. And as you know, the home folder is basically where all the users have their home directories. So just hacks and we're back at the top again. Tip number three. 
And this one's called templates. Let's say you want to create a text file. When you're in the GUI, it's not immediately obvious how you do that. You can open up a text editor and then save it. Let's put it on the desktop. And you can see that it shows up here. But there's a shortcut to do this. Let's put this in the trash. Let's open up our text editor again. Now we store it in this special folder called templates. Let's save this. We will go to the templates folder. Rename it and save. Now, if we right click on the desktop, we see a new context menu entry called new document and we can hit untitled document and it will automatically create the untitled document. It uses the untitled document as a template to create the new version. These are not the same file. For a regular text file, that's not that big of a deal. But if you have a more complicated file, like a script file, that can be very useful. Let's build a script template. We'll go back to our templates folder, create a new document, and let's rename this one script.sh. Let's open it up. A typical shell file starts with shebang. And then the path. If the script file is executable, then basically anything after the shebang is the path to the interpreter that's going to run this file. This can specify a wide variety of interpreters. It can be something like a shell script interpreter or Python or something else. We still need to do a couple of things here. We probably want to put some type of copyright on here. Let's put a license and remind ourselves to put a description in. This will be our template for the script file. And we may want to use sh here instead of bash, but we'll just do this for now. Let's save it, please. We also want to mark the file as executable. Go down to properties, permissions, allow executing file as program. Close that baby up. You could also chmod this. Let's do a little test program. Open up a new window. New folder, we'll call it testy, create. Open her up, right click, new document. Let's put in a script. Let's rename it. Let's edit it. We will echo out. This is a test script. Let's save that. Open up a terminal. And now let's try to execute the script. With wonders never cease. This is a pretty handy little trick you can have a pretty complicated file that you build up. You can take some of the drudgery out of creating these new files for each of your different projects. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.